This is a little video for those men who, who, who are about to or are going through uh, prostatectomies. There's two types of prostatectomies. There's the open wound, which is the sort that I've had where they cut down here and a few inches of my body was cut open and the surgeon pulled it apart and went down in to take out my prostate, including part of my urethra, which is the tube that takes the urine to the penis. But then they have to stitch that up. So the other, the other type of prostatectomy, as far as I know, is a robotic one that where they put five holes in your, in your tummy, that one of them blows the tummy up, and the other four take instruments and cameras so they go down and, and, and cut out your prostate that way. Uh, I, I chose the open method um, here on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. I had a good surgeon who, who, who said he could save a few nerves around the prostate and that's what I wanted him to do. The more chance of saving the nerves, I thought, if it was open surgery. And he told me that he did manage to save a lot of nerves. Saving the nerves helps with <coughs> the later functions like uh, getting an erection later after we've recovered from surgery. You've probably heard about catheters in the body of men after or during and after prostate surgery. Well I'm just going to tell you my experience, it may not be for you but my experience uh, has not been all comfortable and I thought you're better informed beforehand. And the two weeks of discomfort that I've had with this leg bag, this thing on my leg here, uh, is far less pain than dying of prostate cancer as thousands of men do all around the world. In Australia 3,340 men died last year from prostate cancer and they would have had a lot more pain as they approach their death. So I just wanted to talk about what, what, what happens to your urine during this process. It goes into a leg bag during the day and you can, and you can undo this little tap here and release that as it fills up. Um, and at night time you attach another bag to that again and I'll show you a picture of that in a minute um, so it takes the, the volume when you go to bed at night you get one of these night bags which is just a larger store for your urine and put it in a bucket hang it on the side of the bucket and then you attach the, the, this tubing to the end of your leg bag and then you turn on the tap using the tap here so that it flows and then you then you can go to sleep and at night your surplus urine will flow down into the bucket and in the morning you just <coughs> plop the tap off again disconnect and go and empty the storage that was in the leg bag. But there have been problems with it and uh, I just want to tell you what happened to me. Now it's not a pretty sight but uh, you can see that the, the tube from the leg bag comes right up and goes right up inside the penis and into the bladder through the body in the bladder when it gets into the bladder it's got a little balloon on the end of it and it blows the balloon up so that you can't pull it out and this is important because when they've operated and taken your prostate out they've cut each end of the prostate and taken the middle of the tube the normal wee tube is gone so they then join these two tubes together and stitch them up and if you start pulling on this this um, plastic tubing here you might damage the stitching that holds your urethra together and you could cause very very serious injury to yourself uh, and very very dangerous now the way they pump that balloon up if you just look here there's a little tiny um, extra tube that runs up the inside of this one and that's that's the tube that blows the balloon up and when they take this out of your penis they will put something on here and, and reduce the size of the balloon so that it can all be pulled out smoothly now one of the problems of course with this whole event for me has been occasional spasms of pain 
coming from right in the penis. <coughs> And this is, I think, caused because the bowel gets wind in it and pushes pressure onto the bladder, and the bladder wants to release more urine, and and so the the normal valve that sits at the bottom of your bladder, your own valve, is trying to open and it can't because the balloon is in the road. Um, that's my theory. So what happens to me about every hour and a half, maybe every two and a half hours, sometimes it varies, uh, I get a in intense pain in my penis like you, like you would feel when you try to stop having a wee midstream. If you squeezed your penis midstream, you'd get extreme pain. Well, that happens while, while this event is on. And it always happens when I've got wind in my bowel that needs to be passed or faeces in my bowel that need to be passed. So I immediately, once the pain comes, it's so extreme, I immediately rush to this seat on the toilet. It's the most comfortable seat in the house when you've got that pain. And you just wait until you can move something from your bowel, like the wind or the faeces. <coughs> You've got to keep your bowel soft. And uh, you, you, you can do that with various aids, prune, prunes or pear juice or magricol. And whilst you've got this in, in my case, I have to have it in for two weeks. So I've got to go through quite a bit of pain in that time every hour or two and, until uh, it is removed. I'm hopeful that it's going to be removed and this spasm pain will be solved. But it certainly beats having cancer down the track uh, that takes your life out. Okay, so now this pain, once you get onto the toilet seat, I, I normally hang onto the seat, or I, I, I hang onto the wall, whatever, the handle on the wall, and just grin and bear it. You've got to grit your teeth, you can pray, you can, you can scream if you like, but it doesn't really help. Um, you've got to just hold on until the pressure's gone off the bowel. Um, don't push, don't push uh, on your bow because you could do some more damage than, than good. But if you feel a, a soft uh, bow movement coming, then allow, uh, gent gently allow that to come out so that you can be relieved. Once you're relieved, you, you're able to go about your business for, for at least another hour, uh, walking, whatever, um, without this acute pain. The other thing I, I use is to try to keep myself clean is I, I get wet wet ones, baby wipes, bamboo baby wipes. I use um, after each, <coughs> each movement in the bowel, keep yourself clean. You don't want to get infection. You don't want to get um, any, any other problems. So using wet ones. And every day I shower and, and, and wash this part. I put the, the leg bag into a big plastic bag to keep the straps dry uh, as I shower and then I, I also wash around the entrance to the penis so to keep that all clean. That's very important to keep that clean there because you don't want to get any infection. You certainly don't want to get a urinary tract infection otherwise there'll be more pain. So that's been my experience with uh, catheters in your penis for two weeks and, and coping with that. I hope it's been of some use to you. Uh, the other thing I did was to put a put a, a ring of towel on my lounge chair so that I try to keep the pressure off the the bladder and the wound area down underneath my body. Hope it's been useful to you. It's been a terrible <coughs> experience, but far better than cancer killing you. I'm still in the process. Uh, of uh, learning and, and I'm happy to share this with you uh, hoping that it helps you to understand what you might have to go through just be be be, be careful not to pull it out um, the pain does pass it, it only lasts for two or three minutes maybe five minutes at the most just hold on to the rail on the side of the toilet and, <laughs> and grin and bear it <laughs> it does pass and eventually it will heal when, when the catheter is removed. So there you go, little story to help you cope with the pain from catheter implant. See you later.